Hi guys, we are doing our letterboxed what I watched in October video. I'm filming this three days before the end of October, okay? So there's still gonna be some spooky movies, but we're just gonna throw those on November because I've watched a lot of movies this month. So this month I watched the most videos I have watched since June. And then before that, this is also the most. So this is the like second top month of movie watching that I've had in a solid minute. And it was because I was sick. But let's just start off with the first movie. I'm gonna move over to the side so I can put the little information of the movie here. Starting off with Jeepers Creepers Reborn. So this is a 2022 fourth installment, I guess, of Jeepers Creepers. Evil rides again. Forced to travel with her boyfriend to a horror festival, Lane begins to experience disturbing visions associated with the urban legend of the Creeper. I gave this half of one star, okay? Let me just take you back to when I was 15, had my first like real relationship. I was in one of his friend's basements. We were all like three couples watching the original Jeepers Creepers and he was trying to rub my thigh and be really cute and I was sitting there trying not to shit my pants because this movie freaked me the fuck out. This was my childhood trauma, the original Jeepers Creepers movie. This was trash. The storyline, so boring. The characters, the acting, trash. It was just so bad. It was so bad. Like, watch it. This is a movie that you need to watch with your friends and make a drinking game out of anytime there's like horrible production value, anytime it's clearly a green screen, anytime like they, there's so many continuity errors, anytime it's just cringy dialogue, anytime somebody like says something that clearly wasn't on the script but they left it in anyways, it was just not a good movie that you need to watch to experience the trash. And then I watched Nick Kroll, Little Big Boy. I gave this four to five stars. I didn't think I was gonna like his stand-up as much as I did. I'm usually, my, my kind of comedian is very like a Tom Segura or an Eliza Schlesinger or um, I like Taylor Tomlinson as well. Like it's, it's very like storytelling almost. And I was like literally pulled out from what I was doing to the TV and just kept laughing out loud by myself. And that is such a rare thing to happen when I'm watching stand-up, so really good really enjoyed it. I also watched Eliza Schlesinger Hot Forever. I gave this four out of five stars as well. I love her stand-up. I've seen her live twice and I just, I appreciate that she uses her platform to speak about important issues. She did talk about abortion and bodily autonomy and she did it in a way that wasn't preachy and it was still funny and it didn't take away from the comedy show. It wasn't like an aside. It was just, I enjoy her. I think she's very funny. These are the movies that I watched while I was sick. Okay, starting off, I watched The Visitor 2022. So this movie is about a series of tragedies, including the death of his father-in-law, Robert and his wife, Maya, leave their home in London to move back to her childhood home. But when Robert discovers an old portrait in the attic of a man who is his spitting image, he goes down a rabbit hole to discover the identity of this mysterious doppelganger known only as The Visitor. One star. <laughs> Honest to God, every single movie I watched when I was sick, I turned off and I was like, I hated that. <laughs> And I don't know why. I don't know why I decided to subject myself to horrible movies while I was also feeling horrible. Maybe it just matched the vibe. But this movie, there were moments of, oh, that could be something. And then the, the first half was okay. The second half was where this movie tried to do what so many other horror movies do, and that is take on way too much that it becomes it just becomes congested with so many ideas and there's clearly not the budget nor the runtime to fully flesh out these ideas. There's one scene at the end where there's kind of like a um, cult sort of thing and it looks so bad. Just like, it looks like there's all these, it, oh, just the like extras. I was sitting there like, bro. This next movie wasn't my favorite, but it was not as bad as Jeepers Creepers. It was not as bad as The Visitor and that was Mr. Harrigan's phone. I gave this two out of five stars, okay? So this follows Craig, which like, can we just imagine a child named Craig? Like, 
Have you ever met anyone under the age of 40 named Craig? <laughs> a young boy living in a small town befriends an older reclusive billionaire, Mr. Harrigan. The two form a bond over books and an iPhone, but when the man passes away, the boy discovers that not everything dead is gone. This is one of those slow burn movies that doesn't really give you the payoff that you're waiting for. Um, this could have been one of the, first of all, it took so long to have the whole like situation with this boy and this old man. So then it's like more than halfway into the movie that this man passes away and it's just not scary. I think this was based off of a Stephen King short novel, but uh, it was one of those movies that definitely is a Netflix horror movie. It's one of those ones that there is a reason why it came out exclusively on Netflix, why there was no theatrical release, because it was boring <laughs> and it was not good. I watched House of Darkness because I was on a bit of a Justin Long like search after I had watched The Barbarian, which was an impeccable movie. If you're looking for a good horror movie, I watched that I think last month. Watch it, it's incredible. Driving home to her secluded estate after meeting at a local bar, a player out to score thinks his beautiful mysterious date will be another casual hookup. While getting acquainted, their flirtation turns playful, sexy, and sinister. This movie had a satisfying ending. It had the most slow burn, conversational, just like nothing happening through the movie. It's a lot of building tension through the environment and building tension through the stories that are being told. It was also like a one location situation. It's all taking place in this manor that she lives at. And I feel like it's, it's not scary. It's also not like incredibly exciting to watch, but it's not bad either. Plus you've got Justin Long, Kate Bosworth, and like it's hard to go wrong with those kinds of characters. I watched Halloween Ends, which I have a full review on. I will link that down below, but I did give that two and a half out of five stars. And thinking on this movie since I watched it to begin with, I would almost lower that to two stars. It just as a finale end piece, it just does such a shitty job at it. It's one of those things that the longer I think about it, the more I'm like, that was just not good. <laughs> it was just bad. Another movie I watched while I was sick, Confess Fletch. This came out in 2022. I gave this three and a half out of five stars. It has John Hamm, it has Lorenza Izzo, and this is about a roguishly charming and endlessly troublesome Fletch becomes the prime suspect in a murder case while searching for stolen art. The only way to prove his innocence, find which of the long list of suspects is the actual culprit. This movie, is such a John Hamm movie where he just plays this like eccentric, I know I'm trouble, but look at how cute I am. It's so on the nose. And then the cops in this movie are so like, oh my God, stop, but also like continue. It's just like, it's an entertaining watch. This is the movie that I was the most engrossed by out of all of my sick watches because there were actual things going on. And if you like movies like Knives Out, this is like the little brother to that. Like it's not as good at all but it is in the same sort of vein. And then we went to a really, really, really depressing movie, The Fallout. I've seen this on TikTok. This came out um, in 2021. I gave this three and a half stars. It is in the wake of a school tragedy, a school shooting. Beta, Mia, and Quentin form a unique and dynamic bond as they navigate the never linear, often confusing journey to heal in a world that feels forever changed. So it follows Jenny Ortega, who is, um, I think she is Veda, but, it follows her character specifically as she forms these bonds with people who were also like in the same place that she was during this shooting. And it deals with her trauma. It shows like leaning towards substance abuse. It shows pulling away from people who love you because they don't understand. It shows how people deal with things in different ways. It shows that trauma isn't linear and healing isn't linear and it's, a hard watch with moments of levity, but I do think that it's an important watch specifically for parents who have kids in the American school system where this is something that you have to consider. Um, because there are certain ways that the parents deal with this that aren't super helpful, but it's also not a situation that you're taught with like how to deal with somebody who goes through this level of trauma that young. I think it's a, an important movie that starts important conversations, but it's also just like such a fucking downer of a movie, specifically when you're sitting there like this has happened how many fucking times in our society.
gun laws. But all of the acting was done impeccably. You really feel the emotion. You really feel the effect that this is taking on families. You feel the effect that this is taking on friendships. Like there's just, it, it's just a very well done movie that is hard to watch. It's one of those movies that is a good important watch and it is very well done, but I will literally never watch again. <laughs> the last movie that I watched when I was sick, but not the last movie on this list was Hellraiser 2022. I did a Patreon exclusive review on this movie. Overall, I gave it three out of five stars. It was incredibly gory and very visceral. Um, I did watch the original a few months ago if you've seen that video but I wasn't a huge fan of that movie it was just so like story based and I wanted to see more of like the Hellraiser and Pinhead and just all of that whole environment and you really see that here you do you see that here you see people being shitty you see karma coming you see some really 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 gross some gross visuals that um like thinking of this movie, there's a couple specific scenes that always pop into my mind. And one of those is like the nerves. And one of them is like the wires coming into the skin. And it's just, it's, if you like gore, this was made for you, my guy. And then when my cousin was visiting, we watched a couple movies. We watched Bros. I gave it three out of five stars. I think that this movie was just a little bit long. It's 115 minutes. This could have been a tight 90 and have been like a really entertaining, really funny sort of sitcom rom-com. Um, but it was just a little, it just, there were moments where it dragged just a little bit. It followed any other rom-com sort of scenario where it's like, you meet this person and then it's good and then there's a problem and then you work on it and you grow and come back together or whatever. The comedy was funny. It was just like a little bit long, but two men with commitment problems attempt a relationship. That's the whole description. That's literally what it is. The supporting characters were great. I liked the side story with the LGBTQ history museum. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the other guy who comes in here as the romantic like interest his dream is like owning a chocolate factory like this is some Willy Wonka type shit and um that was weird and that was I mean I guess it's better than everyone else being like I wanted to be a writer or I was a journalist it's like okay I was a chocolatier bitch and then we watched Pearl <laughs> and I was so excited watch this movie because I really liked X and I've heard nothing but praise for this movie and when I say that we weren't necessarily sober watching this um <laughs> this is not one of those movies that you want to not be watching sober because there are moments of dialogue that seem like they go on forever there are like these long the end scene where there's just this long camera stare it literally like poured into our souls but Fuck, it was a good, interesting movie. The colors were beautiful. The like slow deterioration of Pearl was just so interesting and like hard to look away from. So this is, trapped on her family's isolated farm, Pearl must tend to her ailing father under the bitter and overbearing watch of her devout mother. Lusting for a glamorous life like she's seen in the movies, Pearl's ambitions, temptations, and representations all collide in the stunning Technicolor-inspired origin story of X's iconic villain. I would absolutely watch this movie again, uh, probably sober this time because goddamn that was an experience and then the last movie I subjected my cousin to this yesterday um <laughs> the terrifier 2 art the clown is he's a classic villain at this point he is fucked and uh, he is relentless and he is creepy as shit and the first terrifier movie was like a low budget passion project that was so weird and became kind of a cult classic in the horror community. If you haven't seen it and you don't like gore, it's not gonna be for you. <laughs> if you're okay with gore and very little else, like a very slasher except like slasher, this is gonna be up your alley. Terrifier 2 is a little bit more story driven. Ter Terrifier 2 is very long. How long was this? This was 138 minutes. Could have been 10, 15 minutes shorter, but I will say there was very few moments, like the dream sequences could have been cut a little bit, but very few moments that I was sitting there like, oh my God, wrap it up. 
you can't really be bored at this movie because there's always something happening. There's always like either Art being like really playful and like waving at his next victim like hello or him being incredibly fucking creepy. After being resurrected by a sinister entity, Art the Clown returns to Miles County where he must hunt down and destroy a teenage girl and her younger brother on Halloween night. As the body count rises, the siblings fight to stay alive while uncovering the true nature of Art's evil intent, which is essentially just to be a murderous piece of shit. <laughs> So the whole murderous intent is just to be murderous. That's that's really the intent. Um, it is, it's one of those movies that I kind of just want to watch again and again. It's such a good character study on villains without a real purpose. Like he, he tracks down this family because there's apparently a link towards this girl's dad and Art the Clown. Like he drew pictures and imagery of the victims and of Art himself. It just, it's one of those movies that I want to watch again, but also like I will not be actually subjecting myself to this movie for probably another year. And then I'll do a binge of like Terrifier 1 and Terrifier 2 in the same night. This is a watch party kind of movie for sure. And then I've also been watching a lot of Real Housewives Salt Lake City because my cousin's very into that and she was here for a week and we got through like two seasons. And um, the amount of drama that these 45 year old women allow into their lives is absurd and thoroughly entertaining and I love to watch it. But that is it you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed make sure that you thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to see some vlogs. I've got those on my second channel link down below. I've also got a bunch of empties, project pan, beauty videos on my main channel which is once again linked down below. I need to go pick up my lunch that I ordered at the opening of this video because I'm pretty sure it's been like 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go do that and I will see you very soon. Bye!